going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Friday morning. Uh, a little bit late on the dump, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're catching you during your dump. He sees you when you're pooping. Mm. Uh, but uh, a bunch of random Vikings tidbits and some not-so-Vikings random tidbits uh, to give us some chuckles throughout the day. Uh, first up is, so Kirk Cousins and Kyle Shanahan get it on again. Now, there, there had always been a connection between the two. I mean, they go way back like chiroprac. Uh, Kyle Shanahan was OC to his daddy. Uh, Mike, when he was head coach in Washington 2012, when they drafted Kirk Cousins in the fourth round, after they traded up heaven and earth for RG3 at number two overall, by the way. But mm. And so the connection always been there and always had been rumors, oh, this is the year that the Niners trade for Kirk Cousins. This is the year that it happens, blah, 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 blah. It hasn't happened, all right? But obviously the, their connection is still close uh, and, and blah, blah, blah. And Andrew Siciliano put this out, reporter, how much – uh, do you speak to former Washington coaches Shanahan, McDaniel, McVay, Kirk Cousins? I don't in- intersect. I think it means interact uh, with coaches much because I think it's illegal, <laughs> which would be such a, a Kirk Cousins thing to do. Now, by the letter of the law, I mean, probably. I mean, uh, if Kyle Shanahan was texting Kirk Cousins uh, more than people know, and I, I guess that could be seen as tampering since he's under contract with the Vikings, but also I feel like it's something that happens all the time. I mean, coaches and players move around the league a ton, and I'm sure that they still keep in contact with each other. So I that, that's also a non-answer answer. I don't know, man. I don't know. Also, <laughs> so, so it's a hilarious point out. So Vikes man, fan page. Does phenomenal work. Go give him a follow. So uh, one of the great black and white pictures uh, from the Vikings team and uh, Brian Asimov uh, is a deep in thought in a book uh, while uh, Troy Dye takes a nap. Hmm. Uh, but Asimov is bu- the book he's really into is called uh, The Champion's Mind, uh, How How Great Athletes Think, Train, and Thrive uh, by Dr. Jim uh, Aframmao. There you go. It's a pretty well-regarded book. Uh, you've probably seen it pop up on social media quite a bit. And it's the, the new age, new wave where I feel like a lot more thought has been put into mindset and mental well-being uh, when it comes to athletes and just people uh, in general. Uh, but Asuma, ho- hopefully this does translate on in the field, man. Uh, hopefully this does uh, do that. Uh, hopefully this isn't like a, a LeBron reading a book moment and you notice that lebron uh, on all the seventeen thousand books that he reads he's always on like page two i don't know but hey i mean lebron won a couple championships so hopefully asma can rip off a a, a couple too uh and then we go from there uh speaking of going from there so i i I don't know why people are poo-pooing flag football uh being added to the olympics where it's like oh it's such a regional sport no I, i feel like if it was traditional football Sure, I mean, uh, America would dominate. And flag football, America is probably going to have uh, an edge anyway. But also, I think it's a, a beautiful way to grow the game. And I, I think that it, the international exposure is going to be great. And, yeah, uh, uh, the NFL is encouraging players to uh, join the Olympic team in 2028. And Justin Frickin' Jefferson, who's going to be about uh, 20, 28, 29, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, also, I forgot that the Olympics are in L.A. in 2028. That's going to be a mess. Anyways, uh, but the – could you imagine, like, the U.S. flag football Olympic team? So it's going to be Mahomes and Jefferson and Jamar Chase and, like, Kyle Pitts. And it's just <laughs> – it's going to be amazing. Like, I, I can't wait to see, uh, like, some sort of Swiss uh, Swiss banker who got recruited to the flag football team try to check Justin Jefferson at the line of scrimmage. Oh, oh we, we have press coverage, yeah? <laughs> it's going to be great going to be great, man. Uh, also, something going to be great. I I can't get away from this. Like, I I, I understand this is a little, very, a little bit fantasy football-ish, but so the Tennessee Titans offensive line is, is hot garbage. Like, they're, they're trash. They're, they're, they're very, very bad, right? So they lost Nate Davis to Chicago. Taylor Luan retired, and they're just – they're just bad up front, man. And, you know, I, I'm still waiting for Derrick Henry for the wheels to fall off. He is 29, but – Derrick Henry's still that guy, man. And he could be for the next couple of years. Now, I, I don't want the Vikings to pull off a reverse Herschel Walker. And also, I, I don't think that the Titans are going to get much in trade for Derrick Henry since uh, he, he's in a contract year. But could you imagine? I mean, could you imagine where you know, the Vikings offensive line, you know, the analytics wise, has been blocking great. And Madison has not been very efficient. But I mean, 
Could you imagine Derrick Henry, man? Like, I, I understand he, he's not Derrick Henry of old, but come on. Come on. Right. We got to give up. Fourth round pick? I would do it. I would do it, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Speaking of Madison, so uh, Vikes fan page again. They pointed this out. <laughs> Crazy stat. Garrett Bradbury has more 20-plus yard catches, rushes one since uh, week 17 of the 2021 season than Alexander Madison zero, which is kind of depressing w- when you think about it, where – I mean, Madison has been getting that work this year, uh, but haven't had many explosive plays. And what the referencing is the Bradbury catch uh, it, during the 2021 season, uh, late late in the year against the Greasy Grime Green Bay Packers, where it was the it was the game where Sean Mannion was in, and it was uh, he basically caught the deflection and. I, I mean, it was hilarious. Like it, it was stri- straight up out of the Franco Harris rest in power uh, playbook, and uh, the Grim Reacher, the former tight end at NC State, rumbled for 21 yards. It was great, man. But also, I mean, it's a hilarious sort of one-off, but also it speaks to the inefficiency of Alexander Madison so far, man. So hopefully things get going. Uh, also going is uh, I forget who assembled this, but. They, they went through and they determined what every single coach uh, in the NFL would be doing if they weren't coaching football. And some of the NFC North ones are great. So with Kevin O'Connell, 2021 Boulder Triathlon runner-up, uh, wears t- shoe ties. I don't, I don't know what shoe ties are, but I, I I could see Kevin O'Connell being that or like a dude who is a, a free climber for rock climbing and also a surf instructor. Whoa. Uh, and then Lafleur, the twelve-year-old boy, uh, assistant men's lacrosse coach at Manhattan College, uh, also under federal indictment. That's all. Or no, being investigated by the NCAA. There you go. Uh, the Everflus one, the IKEA toilet. This is great. LAPD detective turns out to be the killer. I mean, doesn't he sort of look, look like Mark Furman? I, I never seen that before, but he sort of looks like Mark Furman. That's all. Uh, and then Dan Campbell, plant manager for Ford Motors, hates ISIS. No, uh, so Dan Campbell looks like the you know stereotypical like rural Minnesotan who who is afraid to go downtown Minneapolis, and I'm allowed to say that because I I, I grew up a rural Minnesotan, there, but he kind of does like, or also uh, he he's uh, he's got the truck sticker "Don't tread on me," and also he's got uh, Calvin pissing on the uh, on the Chevy logo when he drives a Ford. There you go. I mean. Da- <clears throat> I wish Dan Campbell wasn't in division because I really freaking like Dan Campbell, man. That's all. Biting kneecaps and stuff. Uh, so, Skull and Freud is taking pleasure in the pain of other teams. And that's what we got. And stupid uh, New Orleans Saints, I'm always going to dislike them. I feel like most Vikings fans are. But something that's delicious is from Jason from Over the Cap. Uh, if the Saints cut every player on the rooster uh, in 2024 that had a positive salary cap savings, that would create just $15.375 million in cap room. They're currently around $85 million over the cap, so this isn't really a situation where you can reset anymore. Uh, it simply isn't feasible. Now, Hashtag cap is a myth, but the way the Saints have been doing it, taking on dead cap money over and over and over again, that's not how you do it. It's not. Now, the Vikings with Rob Brzezinski have been very smart about how they've gone about it. But the Saints are literally facing Armageddon, like they're facing a financial crisis, like it's 2008 housing uh, all, all up in there. And the league may have to step in because the Saints, well, first off, they're going to have to cut and trade everyone, and they're going to take negative cap hits, and they're basically going to have to field like an extremely weak inside next year, and it's going to be biblical, and you hate to see it. Things you hate to see, that. I, I mean, also, they're cap compliant this year, and their team sucks anyways, except for that defense. So either way, it's whatever, man. There you go. But uh, that's it. That's it. That's uh, Vikings News Dump for Friday, October 20th. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, let's go. Production value.